Hello everybody, this is Alex and I am jumping right into part two of this series. Last time we went over how to print things to the screen, how to use variables, we went over two data types, the strings and the integers. We also went over how to collect user input. And those are all very solid things to understand. But now it's time to add a little bit of logic to our code. Because while it is fine and dandy to collect user input, uh, it, you can't really do much with it apart from just spitting it back out at the user. So let's actually have the computer do things with that input that we entered. The first thing we can do, we're going to go over some conditional statements. And the most basic one is the if statement. Variable name equals Alex. And say this is my own personal computer. It's going to ask, who are you? And I, I need to identify myself. Print. What is your name? If you remember, we're going to take some user input and store it in a variable called input. So input equals read. Going to take what the user types, put it in input. And just to go over what this looks like, we'll go ahead and print it out. It doesn't hurt to print out your variables as you're developing a program. It can help you spot mistakes where it might be hard to hunt them down. I'm going to put Alex. And there we go. It spit it back out at me. So we don't need this anymore. What we will do instead is we're going to take input and see if it matches my name. Because it should only be me accessing my computer. So if it does not match, then it's going to deny me. It's going to say, go away. And we do that using an if then statement. So if condition one, then it's going to do some other code here. And then anytime you have an if and then, you must have an end. Otherwise, it will throw a fit because it never ended. Like any good story, it needs to have an ending. So let's actually fill this in with usable code, not gibberish. In this case, we're going to compare two values. Input is the first one, what the user typed. And then we're going to compare it to name. Comparing is different than setting a variable. So it, it might look nice to say input equal name, but this is actually bad. Uh, if we run this, actually, we'll go ahead and finish this. Print, hello, concatenate my name or my input. We'll go ahead and run this and you can see what I mean. Uh oh, unexpected equal and expression line six. So right here. And it does have the red squiggly. And it tells me in VS code should use equal equal. Go ahead and put another equal. Save that. Oh, it even tells you in the computer craft terminal. Look at that. So run that and hey, it ran just fine. So we'll go ahead and put in my name. Hello, Alex. The exclamation point looks kind of weird beforehand, kind of bugging me, so I'm going to change that real quick. So why do we use two equals? Well, one equal basically sets something to be that, like input is read, name is Alex. That's what the one equal does. The two equals compares the left and the right. So input compared to name. Now, if you try to compare something that doesn't exist, like names, it will throw a fit. Um, I'll just put in Alex and, well, actually, I guess it won't error out. It just won't do anything. As you can see, it didn't print out, hello, Alex, because it has nothing to compare to. Therefore, it, it's never going to run this. You always got to make sure that you're comparing variables that actually exist. You got to make sure you have information there. Now, what if we want something to happen if it doesn't equal like they don't equal each other that is where the next part of this if then statement comes in called the else uh, so this is basically saying if these two compare then we will do this otherwise if they don't we will do something else uh, i'm gonna say go away input exclamation point because we're shouting at them to go away this is not your computer so let's clear this junk, run this program. I'm going to do it right first. It's me, Alex. I'm accessing my computer. Hello, Alex. Or maybe I'm a sneaky criminal trying to break into someone's computer named Dan. It's going to say, go away, Dan. 
because I am not Alex. It doesn't equal name. Uh, there, there's a lot of application with this. There's a lot you can do just with the if then statement and taking input. It's it really expands your pool of possibilities just knowing that. So I, that's really all I'm going to go over in this episode. It's very simple, uh, and I challenge you to create a program where maybe you're instead of just comparing a name, you have a password. Password protect your system. And you type in the password, and if it's not correct, then it tells you to go away. If it is correct, then it'll welcome you in. It'll say hello. So try your hand at that. If, if you want extra points or if you want to try and go a little bit beyond, try and make it so whatever you type in the password field, it's actually stars, like the traditional you know, password that you type in in real life. There is a way to convert everything you type into stars. And there's good tools to reference for that. So if you can do that, let me know. Otherwise, if you need help, put it in the comments as well and I can help out. And with that, see you next time. Bye-bye.